Welcome back, everyone. I hope you're all doing well in this seemingly never-ending lockdown. And I just wanted to invite you all to a special live event on my Discord server tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. You'll be able to find the links in the description and pinned comment. Second, you may have noticed that instead of my American flag background, I just have the green screen today. That's because I noticed after recording that I have two really harsh shadows that you can probably see. And so it's probably better just to go with the green screen. As if things weren't bad enough already, we have to constantly deal with a corrupt press that's taking advantage of this situation to execute yet another political hit job on our president. And don't get me wrong, the press should ask tough questions of the government, especially now, but they've gone way beyond that. I mean, at this point, the press is indistinguishable from the Democrat Party. This reality was demonstrated once again by Democrat Party operative Chris Cuomo, brother to New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. For a guy who's supposedly so sick that he's hallucinating his brother in a tutu and cracking his teeth from the shivers, he's certainly well enough to dishonestly edit a clip and present it as fact. And he doesn't just present a deceptively edited clip, but then he pulls a shift and reports his own fan fiction as factual information. Take it away, Fredo. Real. The past is over. There can be no more letting politics reinforce our worst instincts. We need to build on our best instincts. And that said, while I'm asking you all to do that, the man at the top refuses to change. I just want to stop him right there. Pay attention to what he's saying here just before he contradicts himself and does exactly what he says you shouldn't do. I mean, this either comes from a complete lack of self-awareness, or it's a conscious strategy of doublespeak. Look at him. He's reading something there, probably prepared by Andrew Cuomo. I thought that Chris Cuomo was a professional. He looks like me making a video. We'll get right back to exposing this latest media con job, but first I have an important message for all my viewers. The world we live in today is in flux, filled with a flood of information that's often as much gossip as fact making it hard to know what the real situation is, making it easy for people to panic and make bad decisions. The only way not to get caught up in that chaos is to have a plan allowing you to avoid dealing with empty store shelves, long lines, and in the worst case, desperate people. Use today to prepare. A great place to start is storing food in your home. I'm prepared and I ordered even more recently. With this unprecedented emergency, orders are being delayed, sometimes eight weeks or more. I urge you to add your order to mine today. Take action so you're ready for what's coming and save $70 on a two-week emergency food kit when you go to my special website, preparewithdronetech.com. Those that know what's coming are preparing today. Go to preparewithdronetech.com. That's preparewithdronetech.com. In a couple of days, the cases will be down to zero. Well, the cases really didn't build up for a while, but you have to understand, I'm a cheerleader for this country. I don't want to create havoc and shock and everything else. I'm not going to go out and start screaming, this could happen, this could happen. That's exactly what leadership is. Anybody can tell people what they want to hear and make it easy. And then you know what you get? Exactly where we are right now. So Cuomo presents an edited clip that's cut conveniently just before the president goes on to explain the big steps that he took to prevent the spread of the virus. He then goes on this insane rant, charging the president with doing nothing while the country falls apart around him. I'm going to address Cuomo's dishonest rhetoric, but first let's watch what Cuomo didn't show his audience. You have to understand, I'm a cheerleader for this country. I don't want to create havoc and shock and everything else, but ultimately when I was saying that, I'm also closing it down. I obviously was concerned about it because I closed down our country to China, which was heavily infected. I then closed it down to Europe. That's a big move, closing it down from China and then closing it down from Europe and then ultimately closing it down to the UK. So, and it was right about that time. But I'm not going to go out and start screaming, this could happen, this could happen. So, again, as president, I think a president has to be a cheerleader for their country. But at the same time I'm cheerleading, I'm also closing down a very highly infected place, specifically the location, as you know, in China that had the problems. Ah, would you look at that? Would you look at that? What? 
I said, would you look at that? Much like Tapper addressed Trump and charged him with having no plans, despite all of these plans being laid out and addressed during task force briefings, Chris Cuomo is presenting edited clips to portray the president as doing nothing and bullshitting the country. His words. I'm not going to prepare the way I should because it reinforces the bullshit I'm telling you. Now, let me just challenge Cuomo's claims at the beginning of the last clip. Anybody can tell people what they want to hear and make it easy. And then you know what you get? Exactly where we are right now. Where exactly are we right now, Cuomo? Just a couple weeks ago, your brother, the governor of New York, was blasting the president and the federal government for not getting them 30,000 ventilators he claims that he needed. He claimed that people would be choking to death in the hallways of hospitals. Meanwhile, we find out he's been hiding away thousands of ventilators, and at no point has any hospital in New York been short on ventilators. Oh, but Cuomo can't report on that because it might reflect positively on Trump's handling of this outbreak. Or maybe it's because it might damage the credibility of the so-called experts whose predictions are now shown to be wildly overblown. Even with hospitals reporting coronavirus deaths when coronavirus wasn't the cause. The rest of his display is purely partisan theater, not to mention completely hypocritical given his calls at the beginning of the video to quote, stop ignoring facts for political advantage. CNN wasn't alone in presenting deceptive clips for political purposes. Over at MSNBC, they were running cover for a guy named Dr. Zeke Emanuel, who happens to be a member of the far left Center for American Progress, who was recently spotlighted by Tucker Carlson because he said this. Realistically, COVID-19 will be here for the next 18 months or more. We will not be able to return to normalcy until we find a vaccine or effective medications. I know that's dreadful news to hear. How are people supposed to find work if this goes on in some form for a year and a half? Is all that economic pain worth trying to stop COVID-19? The truth is we have no choice. 18 months? Predictably, Tucker Carlson pointed out how ludicrous this idea is, along with exposing how these so-called experts have been wrong about so many things. MSNBC, being Democrat Party propaganda, rushed to do damage control and presented the doctor's comments as, quote, merely promoting physical distancing. And now what we're seeing is that the president, and by the way, his uh right-wing uh, clones in the media like Tucker Carlson are attacking people mm. or saying how bad this could be. We were all saying, listen, if we don't do physical distancing, we are going to have hundreds of thousands of people die. And instead of dealing with the fact that we need the physical distancing, they were attacking the messenger. No, he was just attacking your claims and your credibility. Tucker could easily flip it around and claim that you're attacking the messenger. I gotta say, again, this entire thing is reminding me of the man-made global warming doomsday movement. Lots of predictions and models that turn out to be completely wrong, yet the cult continues to revise their dates and somehow retain credibility. Hopefully, they turn out to be wrong about this like they've been wrong about so many other things over the decades. That's all for this episode. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel and my mission, please consider subscribing to me on one of these platforms. You can find all the links in the description and pinned comment. And like I said at the beginning of the video, we will be having a live Discord event tonight on my Discord server at 8 p.m. Eastern. You can find the links for that as well in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.